Hello, welcome to the last video on this look at function series in Unreal. And on this last one, I'm going to show you how to use the look at function in Unreal to make characters or bones or anything look at some other thing in the world. And I'm going to explain how all of its parameters work. And this one is a bit more complicated than the, the other ones that I did, because those one did the vector math pretty much by themselves. This one, you really have to understand it. It still does a lot by itself, but you have to understand what's going on to understand how to use it. And I really recommend watching the intro to vectors video that I did as the very first video of the series. So I'm going to show you how to use this function to make an actor look at another actor like the other functions do. But the most fun in this video is going to be showing you how, let me possess the character, how to make the character's head look towards where you're looking at with a limitation so it doesn't twist 180 degrees when you look backwards. I hope you enjoy it and let's get to it. setup here I have this axis actor that I created to show directions of the axis and it's always going to point to the cone when I'm simulating or playing because I call this function the a look at function the one for this video on tick so it's always looking at the cone but one thing you can see that is different from the other look at functions so the one I'm using here is look at function that's what it's called the difference from find look at rotation and the other ones I, made in the, uh, I talked about in the previous videos is that it doesn't try to keep a specific axis pointing up. So you can see now it's Z and if I go to the other side, it can become Y or, you know, it, it really doesn't try to keep any specific axis up. And the reason for that is because it computes always the smallest possible rotation to get to the target look at rotation. Let me try to simplify that. So if I make it look to the left here, that's practically zero rotation. So X is pointing to the left, Z is pointing up, and Y is pointing that way, and that's how the world axes are as well. When I make it look up, the smallest rotation is just making X move towards the up direction. So Z is going to point that way because it just rotated X like this, like I'm moving my mouse. When I make it look... This way, Z is still rotating that direction because this is still the smallest way to get there. But if I move this cone sideways a bit, you can see that Z now is rotating up. And that's because the smallest rotation, and if I, I, I'm going to align here X with the horizon. Now Z is back to pointing up because the smallest rotation to make X rotate towards this direction would be just to make x rotates this way which would keep z pointing up so you're gonna get some weird results sometimes and that's just because it's trying to find the shortest rotation path for the look at rotation so you don't have control for the up vector with this function but that's something we can work around just not going to talk about that exactly right now let me show you how the function works the parameters you pass to it the look at function the first parameter he has is the current transform the current transform is the transform of the thing you're trying to rotate towards something. So for in my case, it's my actor transform, this axis actor that I have. And it's going to use that transform to calculate from its location to the target location, what's the look at direction. The target location is the next parameter. So I'm getting the actor location of my main axis target, which I am passing. It, it, this is just an actor value that I'm setting to the cone here in the and the parameters for my axis, so main axis target cone. And then I get its location and that's the target. So current transform is going to be used to compute the direction from this transform to this target position. Look at vector here. You saw the X was the thing pointing at my cone, right? But I can make it be something else. Let me show you something before I explain what I'm doing here. If I go into the components for my actor, I have this local axis that is hidden. I'm going to make it visible. This is 
an error, an error component. The error component it always it has its local x axis pointing in the direction of its arrow of the arrow. So if I rotate it up and then go back to the move tool, you can see the x because I have it in local space here at the top. This is global and this is local. So because I have it in local space, you can see that x is rotating with the arrow here. So that's the arrow's forward vector. And now that the arrow is pointing this way, if I play, the arrow is the thing pointing at the cone. So it looks like it was X, but it was just because the arrow was aligned with X. Now you can see the arrow is always pointing at the cone. And that's what this look at vector thing does. So it gets a direction and it's going to calculate the look at rotation from that direction to make that direction look at the target. And the target direction is computed from the current transform to the target position. It may sound confusing, and it is a bit, especially because you have to worry about what is the transform space for these things. So for now, the transform space, think of the first thing you're using. The first transform I'm passing to it, the current transform, is my actor transform. These are always relative to the world. It's called a, a, a world space transform. This actor location from X is target is the same function as, uh, it, it also, it's not the same function, but it's in the same class. It gives you the location in world space for this other actor. And what I mean with world space is you may have seen in a reel, sometimes you have things that are called relative rotation, relative location, world transform, etc. And this is because when you have an actor, the actor's parent, if the actor is not parented to anything, the actor's parent is just the world. And then if you look at its transforms, its location, for instance, for this one, it's 323, then the other two values. And this means that it's offset by these amounts in each axis from the world. But if I select, for instance, the sphere in the center of my actor, this small sphere here, you're going to see that its location is 0, 0, 0. That's because it's exactly at the center of my actor, at the zero point for the actor. So it doesn't matter where the actor is, how it's rotated, scaled or whatever. The sphere is always going to have its location 0, 0, 0. But that's relative to my actor. Unreal has an option here when you're looking at the rotation of something to see relative or world. So currently I'm seeing relative and it's going to be relative to the parent. The parent of the sphere is an offset component that I have that it's also currently at zero. And then it's parented to a root component that I have. And the root component is relative to nothing else, just the world, because it doesn't have a parent besides its own actor. So its location is the location relative to the world. But the sphere is relative to its parent, and in this case, it's zero. If I change it to world, you're going to see that now it matches the same location as the actor head, because this is its world location, its absolute location. It's not relative to anything. So going back to the blueprint, all of these, when you pass this data, these parameters to the look at function, you have to make sure that all of them are in the same space transform. So in this case, I'm using world transform. So let's talk about the look at vector. The look at vector is going to be the thing that, I, like I said before, the function is going to compute the rotation from that direction to the direction that looks like the target. So if it's that simple, why am I not just using local axis, get forward vector? And get forward vector, by the way, doesn't give you the result in relative space, it's world space. And that's why I need to do this computation here. What inverse transform direction does, let's look at its description. Just the second line. For example, if T was an object's transform, this would transform a direction from world space to local space. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So T is my current actor transform, my axis, and then I'm transforming the forward direction in world space from the axis, from the, the arrow, into this actor's local space. And this gives me this direction relative to my actor. So no matter how much I rotate my actor, this direction is always going to give the exact same numbers here in the end result, because I'm, it is rotating with my actor, right? Because the component is inside the actor. So it's, it's rotating with my actor. This offset, this direction is always going to be the same. And why am I doing that? Because if I don't, let's say I connect this directly to look at vector. Let me show you. It's going to be weird and it's going to be hard to understand just by seeing what happens, but 
So you can see this is <laughs> rotating very crazy. Um, and this is happening because so on one frame, it gets that this direction is not pointing at the target. And then it creates a rotation that makes this transform point at the target. Then on the next frame, this transform is perfect for the arrow to be pointing at the target. So the offset rotation would be zero, which means the result to look at rotation is a zero rotation. So then what we get here from the return value is a zero rotated transform. Which reminds me that the look at rotation that it computes, the offset doesn't just offset this. It gives you the transform in the location and scale that you had before, but it replaces the rotation with the look at rotation. So on one frame, doing this, passing the arrow forward vector to the look at vector, on one frame, you have the offset of the, the arrow pointing this way, and then it's going to rotate towards that. So this actor is going to be rotated like that. But then in the next frame, the offset is zero. So it's going to apply a zero rotation to this actor and this actor is going to go back to its original rotation. And that's what we see, these two rotations happening constantly. See, on one, it's the arrow is pointing at the cone and then it goes back to its original zero rotation. So that's why you want to keep passing to the look at vector, the offset of the arrow relative to the actor that I want to rotate, because then the offset is always the same. So it's always going to be computing a rotation that would rotate from that zero rotation to where the target is. That's the look at vector. And just so you know, the way I computed it is to show you that you can get any direction in the world and convert it to another actor's transform, make it relative to that other actor. You just need to get that actor transform and use inverse transform direction. Another option that I could have used here was to do this here. Local axis, then I get the relative rotation, which already would give me the rotation relative to my actor, and then I just get the forward vector like that. Because this forward vector is not going to be the forward vector of the actor in world space. It's going to be just the forward vector of this rotation. This rotation is already relative to my actor, so this forward vector also is relative to my actor. But I chose to do it the other way so that you can see how it works. For now, I'm going to skip talking about use up vector and up actor because these are unnecessarily complex, and I'm going to skip to clamp coning degree. I'm going to go back to these later. Clamp coning degree is how many degrees this look at function can offset the rotation of your object from a zero rotation trying to look towards the target. Let me show you in practice. So I have, it's going to, it's going to be trying to make the arrow here, the white arrow, look at the cone. And if I change its parameter, I have it as a parameter here, clamp coning degrees. If I change it to 15, it's only going to be able to rotate 15 degrees in any direction while trying to look at that cone. So I'm going to play and now you can see that it's not actually looking at the cone because it's limited by those 15 degrees. But if I put the cone in front of it, now it can look at the cone until it gets past those 15 degrees that limits how much it can move or rotate. Let me, let's make it bigger a bit. Then let's say 35. So now I can rotate 35 degrees in any direction trying to look at my cone. And this is nice in a way because when you make it pass behind the thing that's supposed to rotate, let's say behind the arrow there, it's going to rotate in a way that when you get to the other side, it doesn't jump it's already pointing toward it. So it's smooth. And that can be really cool. When we get to the character head rotation, you're gonna see, right? But that's what the cone limitation does. Now let's talk about the up vectors. I'm gonna zero out the clamp cone degrees here and enable use up vector. Then I have this plane axis actor where I get the up vector from. Let me show you how I'm doing that. Let me just leave these as zero and enabled. Uh, so the way I get the up vector is I check if my actor is valid, the plane axis actor. And I have a reason to call it a plane axis. If it's valid, I get its forward vector. When passing this up vector here, instead of checking beforehand if the actor is valid and saving an up vector variable, you might be wondering why I didn't do it this way. You select vector 
And then if both up vector is true and the actor is valid, I get the forward from the act from the plane axis actor. Or if not, I just use the up vector from the world. Well, I didn't do it this way because all of them, so all of these are pure nodes, right? When you use them connected to a callable node, the one that has the white arrows, all of them have to be called to compute the thing that's connected to the callable node. So this means that this would be executed, this node here, even if this plane access actor was null, which means that if it's null, you're going to get those errors every frame saying that this actor is null until you fix it, which is very annoying. So that's why I did it this way. My actor is this plane here. This is just an unreal plane. And I added a arrow actor as a child to it. And the forward of this plane, as you can see from the transform here, the transform gizmo is up. So this means that my up vector is currently pointing up. How does the up vector affect it? In a very weird way, considering this, how this function is described. So when it's here, it says, if set to true, the look hat will also perform a twist rotation, which makes us think that this up vector works like the ones we saw on the previous videos, right? When you say like, oh, I want the, from make rot rotation, for instance, your up vector is going to be the second axis in the, in the function's name. So if you're using make rot from X, Y, Y is your up vector or your twist vector. And then if you make it point up, it always tries to make Y point up after directing X in the direction that you told it to. So that's what we think it's going to do. And then if you look at up vector, the position to use for the up vector target, only use this if B up, use up vectors turned on this bowling here. And this is not what it does. So I'm going to play here and I'm going to move the cone around. You see, the white arrow is not following the cone as expected. So what is this up vector doing? It's not even keeping any specific axis up in any way, right? So what is it doing? What it's doing is it considers that up vector, let me position it here, as the normal of a plane to constrain your look at rotation too. If I select the plane, let's move the plane here close to this actor. Let me try to centralize it as best as I can. So moving the cone, you can see that the actor is just constrained to that plane. And if I rotate the plane, that becomes much more clearer. So you can see that the, the arrow is really following that plane. So that's what this up vector means for this function, which is very weird, very weird. It's not an up vector like in Maya or 3ds Max or any standard animation software that has an up vector. What it does is it constrains your look at rotation to this plane. And if you use the cone limitation thing that we saw before, so the clamp cone in degrees, let's do 30 degrees. So if you use that, it becomes even weirder because the order of math that is that it, that's applied to this look at rotation is first it constrains it to the cone and then it constrains it to the plane. So if I turn off use up vector, you're going to see that the cone is limited to those 30 degrees from its original rotation, right? But then if I constrain into the plane, it gets that limited rotation and pro projects it on, onto the plane. So you don't actually have 30 degrees of freedom anymore. It's way less because it's 30 and then squashed down into that plane. So that's how this function works. It's uh, very weird. So I wouldn't use the up vector. I, I don't know. I, I really can't think of a good use for it. You may need it someday. So it's just good to know how it works. But let's talk about rotating the character's head towards something using this function. I'm not going to go into step by step on how to add a character to your project. But just so you know the setup that I did to get to the blueprint that I'm going to show you. I went to add and then add feature or content pack. And then I added the third person project to it. 
Once I had the third person project added to my project, in world settings, I set the game mode override of my project, of my level, to this TP third person game mode. And if you go into that game mode, you can see that the default pawn class it uses is BP third person character. If you go into that blueprint, you're going to see that in its animation settings, its animation class is ABP Queen Make Rod C. If you go to that blueprint, you won't see much here in terms of coding and moving around, etc. But this tells you that this is a child blueprint. So you go to the parent blueprint by clicking at this pencil here at the corner where it says the name of the parent blueprint. And then on the parent blueprint, you're going to see its event graph with some stuff. And this is where I added my logic to it. So first, this came in this blueprint. And then I added try cache camera manager because I needed the camera manager from the player controller. So this function, I call it right when the blueprint starts. This function does is it gets the character that was saved by the logic that Epic made and it gets the controller cast to a player controller because only player controllers have player camera managers. Then it gets the player camera manager, sets it onto the camera manager function uh, variable, uh, stores it there and registers that I have a camera manager. Then back to my event graph after I do that. And this is on the initialize animation function. So after I did that, I get the onin component. This is the skeletal mesh component that's that has this animation blueprint applied to. And then I get the socket transform from the head in its parent bone space. Now this is very important for this setup. I'm getting it in its parent bone space. So it would be neck 02, the bone that is the parent to the head. Because in my anim graph, when I apply the transform to rotate the head, in the rotation settings, I am using rotation space parent bone space. Now, why do I do that? I do that because it doesn't matter how the character gets rotated in the world. All the look at computations that I do are always going to be relative to where the neck is already turned towards. So if the, when the character, when the player looks around the look at initial rotation. So remember that the cone limits the rotation from zero rotation. I want zero rotation to be relative to the neck. So wherever the neck turns toward, that's where zero rotation starts. So that's what I'm doing it in the space of the neck, not world space. So zero rotation is always going to be aligned with the neck. So going back to the event graph, I get the transform of the head in the parent bone space. And then I use it to transform a direction, which is Y. And I, I save that in this variable called head forward axis. The reason I'm doing that is remember when I was using the white arrow to decide what is the initial direction that I want to point towards my target. That's what I'm doing here. So inside the neck transform space, I get the Y direction and save it for later because I'm going to use that in the next space to be the thing that I need to calculate the look at rotation from the direction that I need to calculate the look at rotation from. And why did I choose Y? Because if you're going the skeleton, here for the, the mannequins, if you click this icon here, and then you select the head. Where are you? Let's hide everything here on clavicle. So we hide every bone from the arms. Then we have neck, neck two and head. And if you take neck two, I'm gonna enter selection mode. Push W. Oh man, this camera is super fast. And it's at one. What the hell? Okay, interesting. So you're going to see that Y is what points forward from the neck here. If I select the head, it's the same thing. But the head is the thing that I'm going to be rotating and the transform belongs to the parent of that thing. Like I was rotating my actor, it, trans it belonged to the world. So all my transforms, all my vectors were in world space. My head is under the neck. So that's why I chose to use everything relative to the neck transform space. So forward in my neck transform space is Y. That's why I chose the Y vector. So going back to the animation blueprint, 
Let me close the others here. All right, so I have the vector that represents forward and that's what I'm gonna be rotating towards my target. Now I need to do that every frame. So every frame, I check if my camera manager is already uh, valid because depending on how this is set up, this blueprint will very likely exist a bit before the player possesses the character. So when you try to get the character manager from the controller of this character, this character doesn't have a controller yet on the first frame, and that's very likely. So every frame I check if the camera manager is valid, and while it's not valid, which is probably gonna happen for only one or two frames, I call again the same function that I called before, try cache camera manager, which saves camera manager in this function, in this variable. Doesn't know why I keep saying function. And then once it's valid, I call compute head look head rotation. This is where the magic happens. Here in compute head look head rotation, I'm using look head function to move the head of the character up to a certain amount of degrees, up to 45 degrees towards where the player is looking at. So my target position is I get the camera, camera manager, and this is why I needed the camera manager, because it's the fastest way to know the camera that the player sees through what it sees and what it's what is its rotation location and i need both i get the camera rotation i get the forward vector from that this gives me a normal in the direction that the player is looking at i multiply that by five meters so this gives me a point exactly five meters ahead of where the player is but this is an offset to the origin of the world so i need to add the current player camera location to it. But then I don't pass it directly to look at function. Remember, we were talking about doing everything in the space of the neck bone. So I need to get that transform to convert this location into that space. So I use inverse transform location for that. And the transform is the neck transform. So I get the owning component, with, which is the skeletal mesh. Then I get a socket transform. This is how you can get a bone transform or a socket. Use the name of the bone that I want, the neck underscore zero two bone. And the transform space you can choose, I choose world because these transforms from the camera are in world space. So I need this transform to make it local to the neck. I also need the inverse transform to be from world space on the neck. And then it's gonna become local. So the lo that location that I computed from the camera becomes local to the neck transform space. One thing that's very important to notice here is that Unreal has two of these inverse transform functions. The inverse transform location and direction. The previous one that we used in the make rod function was inverse transform direction. And that's because this is just a normal. I just wanna rotate it depending on how the transform space that I'm using is rotated. I don't care about where it is. In this case, I also care about where it is. This is important because otherwise I would be converting this location into the neck local rotation and scale, but not its offset in the world. But I need it to be, I need to consider where the neck is in the world as well. So that the resulting local location that I got, that I computed from the camera is actually offset to where the neck is as well. So I'm transforming a location. I care about the offset in the world, about the movement, not just the direction of that vector. And again, if this is confusing to you, watch the intro to vectors video that I made. There's a difference between a location and a direction vector. Now, the other piece of information here that I'm passing to my look at function is the current transform is the head transform in the parent bone space. The parent of the head is neck underscore zero two. So this is one of the fastest ways to get this transform already in the space that where I'm doing everything, which is the neck zero two transform space. And the head forward axis, I always keep the same. Cause remember, if I, I was always computing the forward axis, considering the current transform of the neck or the head or of the head, or, you know, considering a transform that keeps changing as I rotate something, as we move the character around, this value would change. So forward would be different things every frame, like what happened with the weird reaction we had with the, the white arrow moving from the look at direction to the original rotation and then back. So I need to have a fixed value. And this fixed value is what we computed to be forward inside the neck zero two transform space. So that's what I'm passing seeing as look at vector. So Unreal is always going to be computing inside this look at function, the offset from that forward vector in the next space to wherever the target location is that I computed from the camera. Then once I have those, that transform, I pass it to a 
transform direction and then I use a make rod from YX to transform the head. Before I explain why I need these nodes here, let me show you what happened if I just get the rotation that, com that comes from look at function. So to get just the rotation, you need to break the transform and then you can get the rotation. This is going to set my head rotation in parent space variable. I just called it like that to remember that this is the head rotation in its parent bone space, so in the next space, because then me or my animator, whoever's working with me, it helps them remember that this rotation is supposed to be used in the parent bone space. So I'm using here the transform modify bone node. In this node, I am setting the bone to modify to be head. And then the translation is set to ignore and to hide its pin. I turned off expose as pin here. Unfortunately, you can't see because I have more screen to my right and real is not moving the window to the correct place, but you would turn off the option that says expose as pin. I did the same thing to the scale, ignore, and I hit the pin. So the node becomes a very simple transform modify bone with only a rotation. Another thing that I did to it was to set the alpha input type as a bool value because by default it's a float. So you can set the intensity of this transform from zero to one, but I want it to be controlled by whether I have or not a camera manager. And that's why I saved that bool variable has camera manager. So I set it to a bool variable and then B enabled. I go to the drop down. And in the drop down, you can see all the variables that you created for the blueprint or even variables inside other actors. So my variable has camera manager is here. If you select it this way, instead of adding the variable here to the graph and connecting here, you make it so that Unreal can optimize the way that this variable is accessed. And I don't remember the, percent the percentage anymore. But on the release notes for this feature, it was something like 25% faster or 30% faster, which is really good. Faster is always better. So I prefer accessing variables this way whenever you can. And talking about that, I can optimize how my rotation is accessed here, right? So I can select the node and in my rotation, instead of exposing it as a pin, I can select head rotation in parent space directly. So I don't need this node anymore. And now this, is 25% or 30% faster. All right, now let's see what's the consequence of not using these three nodes here. So if I just go and compute the look at function and use its rotation to rotate the bone. Compile, let's go to the level. And now instead of simulating, I'm playing, which is gonna spawn the character and possess the character for me. All right, so now I am the character and I have its head looking towards the things that I look. But can you see that it tilts it, its head a bit when it looks sideways? That's because it's using that rule for the look at function that always uses the smallest rotation path possible. It doesn't have a specific up vector for me. When I try to look back, it looks down a lot. And then it goes back to looking towards where it can until I enter the limit of the the cone in degrees where it can move inside. But I don't like this tilt. I want to have control over that. And that's what those nodes that I had were doing. So I wanted to use make rot from YX because Y is the direction that I need to control in the next space. Y is my forward. So that's my look at target. And then X is the up axis. So if I open the skeleton here again and select the head, let me go through the search this time. There we go. Should have done it before. So if I go through that and select the bone, you can see that the up vector is the X axis. So back to the animation, that's why I use X as the twist vector. And then I make a point up. So I have here on my vector that I pass to X. And remember, this is being applied to something that's going to be used in the next space. So I'm not creating a world up axis here. I'm creating an up axis in the space of the neck. And just up had the head a bit leaning forward because the neck is not pointing straight up. If I select the neck here, can I select the neck? 
If I select the, select the neck, you're going to see that while, while X is up, it's not straight up. So I wanted it to point backwards a bit so that it rotates Y a bit up and backwards if Y is forward, backwards as minus Y. So that's why I have a small number here. I tested this with a few values and what I liked the most with the round number was minus 0.1. So this makes, it, this tilts this up vector a bit more towards up in relation to, let's say, the torso of the character. And transform direction is so that I can get what is the y-axis inside this transform here. I needed to know exactly what is the y direction with whatever rotation this is giving me, because that's the only, the only direction from that rotation that I cared about keeping. And for that, I'm using transform direction. Inverse transform direction gets a direction that is in world space and converts it to the local space of the thing that has that transform. This transform is in the next space. So inverse transform direction would convert a world direction into the next space direction. But what I want here is to know where is Y from this transform that it's giving me already in that space. So where does Y point at from this rotated transforms point of view? Another way I could do that is by getting the rotation from here because there is no, in transforms, you don't have like forward vector or anything like that. So you need to get the rotation and then I could do right vector because right vector is the Y vector and then create a rotation just from that. Uh, I mean, actually pass it to the Y here and this would give me the same result. So if I pass it to the head rotation here from the make rot X, uh, Y X, this would give me the same result as using transform direction. So why did I chose to do it the way that is harder to explain? It's because in blueprints, the less low nodes you use, the faster your blueprint is. Blueprint is very slow. Every time you test performance with blueprints, you're going to see that each node, no matter how fast is the operation that this node is doing, just calling a node increases the time of your code. So if you can do things with less nodes, it's better. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting the right vector directly from the matrix. So I'm using the matrix. The, a transform is just a matrix, but I'm not going to go into matrices right now. Let's just call it transform. So I'm just getting the right direction as it would be in this transform space. So when I play now, my character doesn't tilt its head anymore. Its tilt is just relative to where to up and back a bit relative to the neck. So I can look down, I can look up, and if I go outside of the cone limitations, it smoothly turns the other way as I try to look the other way until I get to the limits of the cone and it starts following my mouse again. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's a bit complicated thinking about transforms and matrices, transform spaces and things like that. But unfortunately, it's needed when you want to work with characters and animations and things like that. It's really needed. And if all the vector talk about direction and uh, using them for locations and finding a direction from subtracting to locations, etc., if all that sounded a bit confusing, watch my intro to vectors video. And I made that video mostly for this one because all the other look at functions are pretty easy. They do pretty much all by themselves. But this one really requires you to understand everything that's going on behind the scenes with the vectors. So yeah, don't forget to like if you liked it, subscribe because there's going to be more of it and see you next time.